Welcome everyone to Winning in the Shadows. Andy, Corbin, and Jim are going to break down week three NFL for all of the props. Uh, we are going to start, as always, with the weather and the injuries here. Um, weather, again, we just go through the weather mostly because we want to get in habit because it affects us in the winter, but really not much. Um, uh, going on here, 2% chance of rain in Cleveland, 74% uh, in the Colts, but they have a stadium where the roof is always closed. We spent like an extra $200 million of uh, money to put a retractable roof that is literally never open. Um, it's just absolutely what money so well spent. Uh, it's a thing here in Indianapolis. Uh, maybe some isolated thunderstorms of the Buccaneers. We should be good. Uh, the Bills, this uh, the Monday night games, those are the ones most likely to have any type of weather if we do. Of course, we're recording this on Saturday morning, so the weather could change, but uh, just keep your eye out for the Jags, Bills, and the Washington Commanders, and the Bengals. That is your weather. Uh, oh, boy. Now let's go over the injuries. <laughs> uh, this, is, uh, this, is a, this is a lot here. So, um. Giants and the Browns, uh, Pierre Strong is out, so it's going to be just a little bit more work for the Browns running backs. Joku's out, again, probably going to be some more uh, work for the running backs. So uh, Brian Burns is, is questionable, but um, really it, do, it does help the some of the, the players on the Browns, uh, the wide receivers and the running backs. Packers and Titans. Corbin is your guy uh, – is your guy uh, Jordan Love going to play? Who knows? Uh, he's he's been he's been back training, doing some light stuff. I, I I don't see the I don't see the need to push him back right now. But I mean, maybe I guess it's one of those we'll just wait and see. It kind of puts me off a lot of uh, props on the Packers side for today because I, without knowing that piece of information, it's going to make a huge difference. So I'm probably going to lean to no. <laughs> well, I. I, I I think they'd be crazy if, if they played him. Uh, uh, don't, yeah. That's a that's a risk not worth uh, taking. Tyje Spears, uh, if he doesn't play, obviously much more work for Pollard. So keep your uh, keep your eye out for that one. Uh, Michael Pittman popped up on the injury report on Friday um, locally here. Coach has said like, don't worry about it, no big deal. Um, for the Bears, Keenan Allen is out. Um, so if Caleb Williams throws the ball. If he completes some passes, it will not be uh, to Keenan out, but those are big ifs. Uh, Joe Mixon is doubtful now, mm -hmm. and Damian Pierce is out. Mm -hmm. What is going on with the Texans? Um, I, keep your eye on on that one. Uh, I don't know who's going to start uh, for the Texans at this point. Um, so we'll see. It could be a great way for wire pickup. Um, Jordan Addison is still out. It looks like... Uh, Justin Jefferson is going to be a full go with the, with the quad. He even said it last week uh, when he got hurt. He said, I'll be fine for this week. So I would expect the full uh, Justin Jefferson. So uh, Eagles, AJ Brown is still out. And for the saints, really Taysom Hill is kind of the only uh, a player that accumulates offensive stats. Chargers have an interesting one. What to do with Justin Herbert. It does appear that he will play Josh Palmer's questionable. Um, and for the Steelers, it's great that they keep listing Russell Wilson. This question, it, 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 it's instead of ankles, should just say Justin Fields. Russell Wilson is questionable with the Justin Fields. Um, <laughs> so, uh, Broncos and uh, Bucks. Uh, we got some edge wrestlers and some offensive linemen. The Bucks. It's so crazy how banged up the Bucks secondary is, and I don't think they've given up a passing touchdown. Mm -hmm. So far, uh, it's, it's pretty wild there. Uh, Panthers and Raiders here. Crosby is questionable there, Jim. Maybe you can touch on that. Wilkins is questionable. I'm, I'm assuming those guys are going to play. Uh, gonna Dolph play. It, yeah. They'll play. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, they're, they're always uh, Crosby's banged up from the start of the season. To the end of the day. He, <laughs> yeah, he always okay. plays. Okay. Uh, Dolphins, obviously, just a slew of injuries here. Two is out. Most dirt is out. So. My guess is uh, A-Chain's going to get a lot of attention, and who knows what to do with Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddell. Um, it, I, I I'm not even going to speculate. I will not be playing any Miami Dolphins props for the foreseeable uh, future. Kenneth Walker is doubtful. That could mean a, it, this could be a pretty big game for Zach Charbonnet. Um, it, this, is not, this is a really banged-up Miami Dolphins defense. 
So uh, Charbonnet could be in line for uh, for pretty big week. Um, Ravens, nah, nothing nothing too notable here in the Ravens and the Cowboys. Uh, 49ers and Rams. I mean, Jim's going to talk about the Rams' woes at offensive line. I, I mean, my God, I don't know where this team scores from. Uh, 49ers, Debo's going to be out. <laughs> Kittle's out. Um, if – if Jawan Jennings is available in your fantasy leagues, go get him. Mm-hmm. Th- th- yeah. This this guy could see ten targets this week uh, with with those guys out. So um, I went and got him in one league, but he could be a very very sneaky uh, play there. Lions and the Cardinals. I don't think anything uh, to note in this one. Chiefs and Falcons. I mean, seriously, all these teams are all banged up, but look at the Chiefs. No notable injuries. It's just like, really? <laughs> really? <laughs> the defending champs, the guys that win everything. Well, they're uh, not they're not listing Pacheco though. I mean, because he's he's on IR. But yeah, they put him they put him on IR and they've yeah. got guys. You don't know Pacheco's out. <laughs> yes, we know we know Pacheco is out, but it's just it's 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 funny all these other teams looking at the Chiefs here. Uh Jaguars in the Bills, Tank Bigsby, I, I don't think he's going to play. Evan Ingram, I have no idea on on the uh, the hamstring. And then Commanders and Bengals, who knows with T. Higgins? I, I mean, it's it's such a great matchup. Higgins, he returned to practice as a limited participant, limited on Friday. If he does play, I got to imagine they don't want to take it too hard on him. But it's the best matchup in the league. So, um, yeah. So those are your injuries. So. All right. Thanks, everyone, for joining us this morning. Uh, If you could, hit the like button. Let's do a word of the day. The word of the day is going to be wine, W-I-N-E. If you don't have a hot take to leave in the comment section, just type the word wine in the comment section. It helps the algorithm out quite a bit. We're having a lot of fun. If you could work wine into a a betting uh, comment, by all means, please do so. All right, let's go through some uh, props here, guys. And we're going to start with the quarterbacks here. Uh, I got to tell you, Corbin, I think I'm going back to Baker Mayfield over one and a half. I think this is one I just play every week. What is he? He didn't get it last week, but he ran one in from 12 yards out. Like, how often is that going to happen? Longest Um, career rush, by the way. (laughs) (laughs) Rushing touchdown. Longest career rushing touchdown. I think this is one that I just want to play every week. He's, what is he, 11, uh, 12 and 5 uh, in his last 17? Um, so I think if you play it every week, you're going to come out ahead and we're only getting minus 125 on this, Corbin. What are your thoughts, uh, quarterbacks in this game? Yeah, I'm going to slightly – I don't disagree with the passing touchdowns, but I'm more leaning to the under for Baker's passing yards. I'm expecting them to run more today than, than pass. The Broncos' pass defense is way better than their uh, rush defense, which is quite honestly poor and continues the theme from last year. Geno Smith only got 158 uh, in week one even. And 236, I could quite e- easily see him just going around the 200 mark. I don't think he's going to have to do an awful lot this week to – to have success, I think they're going to run more. So that's where I lean with that. All right. Uh, we'll move on to the Bears and the Colts. Uh, passing yards. I, Jim, I, is this a passing attack from the Bears, or is this run, run, run against the Colts, the worst rush defense? This 213 sounds pretty high. Yeah, I mean, if there's ever a week to protect Caleb, this is going to be the week, right? I mean, we would expect a, you know, a – what? How many carries? 35, 40 carries? Well, Joe Mixon, a, yeah, Joe Mixon, yeah, it, both of the running backs have faced the Colts have gotten 30-plus carries, <laughs> Josh Jacobs and Joe Mixon, so yeah, why yeah. not? So if you're going to protect Caleb, I mean, this is the week to do it. Um, I think they try to get him a couple safe throws, get him into a bit of a rhythm, and just protect this kid, because if they don't, <laughs> like we said at the beginning of the season, you can see very clearly he's not going to make it. You are not going to survive in the NFL running around like a chicken with your head cut off like he's been doing for the first two weeks. So, yeah, I would, it's, I'd see more of a running attack. I don't think he gets over this 213. It's going to have to be a big play. I will say it's quite interesting. I, I quite liked uh, Caleb to go. And I've been playing Caleb under the first weeks anyway, but uh, his total came out around 204 this week, and I was intrigued. I, I quite liked it then, and it just keeps going up and up, which I mm-hmm. find quite strange, to be honest. So... Um. Yeah, the, I, I've given up trying to figure out most of the line moves on props. You can figure out some, 
Um, but yeah. the, some of them move up and I, I don't understand it. So I, I've just decided that I will drive myself nuts um, trying to figure some of them out. <laughs> Daniel Jones and Deshaun Watson. I, I kind of lean under on Deshaun. Just I don't think they're going to need him to <laughs> to do much in this game. Corbin, uh, anything you like quarterbacks in the Giants and the Browns? Again, I kind of lean Jones to go under under 181. He had 178 versus the Commanders. And if you're not going over against the Commanders, I, I don't suddenly have any confidence in you to go over versus the Browns, quite honestly. I think they're a decent pass uh, defense. Dak went under this total, and Trevor Lawrence just only just went over versus them. Again, I don't put Jones anywhere near those two. So I'm kind of – I lean under on that, so – um, we'll be doing best bets at the end of the show. We're also going to go over the offense and defensive lines. Jim does a great job uh, with that. We'll go over our survivor pick, and uh, Corbin has an alt-universe same-game parlay. So that's coming up after we break down all these props. Uh, Chargers and Steelers, nothing out for Justin Herbert. Uh, Jim, I can't do anything with Justin Fields. Kind of a pass, right? No, not when it comes to passing. Most certainly not. Um, yeah. Yeah. Eagles, Eagles and Saints. You know the the Derek Carr. I he's getting a lot of credit. It's not like he's been throwing for four hundred yards and <laughs> like lighting it up. Like is, yeah, the team looks great, but it's been a lot of you know Alvin Kamara, ru- you know, rushing mm-hmm. and and such. That being said, the Eagles defense just doesn't seem to the Eagles as a whole doesn't seem to be there. Uh, Jim, I'm interested in your take on Jalen Hurts, um, if we can do anything with that. What's going on with Philly? Um, what's your take on the quarterbacks in this game? Huh. I think they're both due for some uh, some rough times ahead. This Derek Carr is not going to continue the way he's continuing so far. I think you go back and you watch a lot of the Saints highlights, and a lot of his big plays are just those, you know, YOLO, just throw it deep and, uh, and pray to God and as you guys make a play for him. So that's not going to last forever. I think we're due for a little bit of regression with Carr. Um, I worry about Philly's defense, though. They're secondary. There's some names in it, but, man, have they not looked good. They just flat out have not looked good. They let the, the Falcons just march right down the field. I don't think this team really has an identity. Their identity should be running the ball. So if the Eagles get back to what get them to the dance, which is running Barkley and running Hurts, these passing numbers are kind of null and void. I, I, I believe that that's where they should really make their bones. Uh, with A.J. Brown out, I'm going to look more towards the rushing in this game than I am the passing. I agree. I think Carl's going to regress. I just I don't think this is the week that he's going to regress. Uh, the Eagles' pass defense is quite honestly shocking. But again, Andy, you touched on it. Carl, Carl's only thrown for 243 versus the Cowboys. Now, I know he was up big, but 243 is not an awful lot. And he only had like around 200 versus the Panthers. I know they were up massively in both games, and I'm expecting mm. this one to be a bit closer. So I'd kind of lean to the over, but it's one I can't, I can't play with my own money. I can't trust Carl ever. ever. We, there was so many times last year where we liked him certain weeks and others not, mm. and it, it just... It's just hit and miss. So, it's. I mean, they've scored forty four and forty seven points, and Derek Carr's completed only thirty passes. Um, it, so it's you know Rashid Shahid long. It's Alvin Kamara. Um, so, all right, Texans and the Vikings. Corbin, you've been all in on the Texans, or uh, if they don't have any running backs, is it the C.J. Stroud all day? Yeah, Stroud's gonna throw all over them I, again. I was I I have one receiver that I'm I'm looking at, but again, uh, we mentioned it last week. It's hard to just pick one receiver. I I think you could quite easily go for maybe Stroud passing touchdowns again. I'm not sure if that's at one and a half again today, but uh, that paid off well when we played it. You have to feel like they're gonna throw the ball here with limited options mm-hmm. at running back. Good so. price, one and a half at minus one twenty five. That's, that's very a, tempting. It's a great price uh, considering how how banged up they are. Um, yeah, in that backfield. So, um, let's see. Uh, Packers at Titans, obviously nothing up. Uh, Will Levis under. Just it, it hit it kind of miraculously hit last week, but he was at one ninety two towards the end and just couldn't quite get over the hump. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's Will Levis. Will Levis and the unders kind of have him throw an interception. Maybe <laughs> I don't yeah. know if he's learned his lesson um, no. or not. <laughs> I, no. 
this is this one this is one that i've already sprinkled uh myself i actually whilst uh the prop was out on uh willis earlier in the week i actually took both of them just to go under it was 206 then i i i don't the packers are gonna if if willis plays we're gonna try and just run the ball and control the time of possession like mm. we did last week at which point he's not going to have as many opportunities to throw richardson got to 198 last week i i just i don't see levis get into this total quite honestly with the weapons he has and again i mention it every week we can't defend the run so mm -hmm. uh, pollard whoever it is is gonna just run straight through us i don't think he's gonna need to go over this total so panthers and the raiders oh man both these quarterbacks this is right in my wheelhouse here i think andy dalton comes in and goes over I, 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 we watched him, we've watched him do this where he's mm -hmm. a backup. He comes in and just Bryce Young is just the, what the Panthers have done to poor Bryce Young um, <laughs> is, you know, like, so the last time that he started for Carolina was against Seattle. He went 34 of 58 for 361 yards. Yep. That was his, that was his last start. I would take the over on this one. I, I think, People think that the Panthers, you know, really stink, and they do. But when Dalton is in there, when you have a competent quarterback, I actually think the offensive line is going to look a lot better than it has with Bryce Young. And Dalton is just not going to miss some of those throws that Bryce has. I actually really like Andy Dalton over 211. Uh, Jim, what do you think? I'm lockstep with you. This is a, the, as soon as I heard the change made, this is one of those moments where everybody's going to pivot the other way. And you forget that Andy Dalton is a competent backup who can check the ball down, find the open receiver. It might not be for 30 yards a clip, but they will check the ball down. And I also don't see Carolina's rushing attack eating up a lot of plays. I think Dalton's going to have to throw it a little bit around here. So I'm real interested in his, his over 211. Um, I'd be interested in his completions as well. Once we get a little bit closer, we find out a little more clarity with the injury report, what it looks like, maybe live. Let's see what um, they got is tw they it's only 20 out? and a half. It's only 20 and a I half. I could most certainly see him going over 20. I think that's a great. I was expecting 25, 26. Okay. Um, yeah, so I like Andy Dalton this week. Corbin, Minshew? Uh, no. That's a no. That's a no. no. Easy enough. Geno Smith and, <laughs> Geno Smith and Skylar Thompson. Uh, these are complete stayaways for me, Corbin. You like any of these guys? No, I'm staying away from those as well. The under on Skylar Thompson. Think so? The under, yeah. The, the, the Seattle defense is for real. Yeah, they're good. It, it is. It's for real. And Skylar Thompson has proven that he does not know how to play quarterback at the NFL level. He just doesn't. He's a gimmick quarterback. Um, I don't care who they have at wide receiver. I think this number is actually very high. I mean, think of it. You, you trust Will Levis or Skylar Thompson to go over 200 yards? I mean, I would, Will Levis Skylar, still has a better shot. I would trust. Skylar. I would trust Skylar. I would trust Skylar. Will Levis. I'm just so out on Levis. Uh, I'm sorry, Titans fans. By the way, there was a very nice gentleman in the comment section yes. uh, <laughs> last week that said. He said something about these clowns don't think the Titans are good. So we messaged back and forth, and he was like, hey, I took out the word clown and put fine gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> so, great comment section. Uh, 49ers and the Rams. Uh, there's no way I'm taking it over on Matthew Stafford. Um, but I, like, I don't – Jim, at what, how, how long do you play Matthew Stafford? Like, I was thinking the same thing. I, I I know it's yeah, I know I know it's pro football, but my God, this this, this you, game you could get protect your franchise. This game could get really really ugly. I like unders on both. I just don't think mm -hmm. Purdy's going to need to throw the ball that much, and I don't think Stafford is going to have any ability uh, to have any time to throw. Who's he throwing to? Um, it, it I mean for him to get over two hundred and sixteen, that means you're going to have to have one wide receiver go over eighty. That's Demarcus mm -hmm. Robinson. Then what, Tyler? Johnson is going to be what you have to get 70 from him and then figure out where I just, I don't see it. I, I don't gonna see have Rams to get having... production from Kyron Williams. You're going to have to get it from everywhere. To get yeah. To Stafford games. under man seems like a real tasty one. Corbin, you got, you like any of these quarterbacks? I agree with you. The Stafford unders that just, just cause who is he going to throw to? That's, that's the only thing I can get to. So 
Yeah. Uh, Goff and Murray. This should be a fun game. Of course, we thought the Lions and Buccaneers was going to be shootout. Then it wasn't. Uh, Corbin, you like either of these quarterback props? It's kind of one of those. I, I kind of lean Murray to go over his passing just because the Lions have a good rush defense. Uh I, th- I think Marvin Harrison could go over again. So, But then I look outside of that. There's a few options, like Trey McBride to have a few. And again, I could easily see another shootout potential in this game, particularly with it being at Arizona. So, I, yeah, I would lean to the Kyler Murray over, but no real confident No real that. confident plays. Ravens at the Cowboys. Uh, Dak and Lamar. Uh, Jim, this Ravens defense just doesn't seem like this is the Ravens defense that we've known for the last, you know, 15, 20 years. It just seems like you can move the ball on them. Now, that being said, this isn't the Cowboys offense that we've known for the last <laughs> few years. Uh, I think this Cowboys offense, I, I, I think this may not be a fluke. I mean, I think they're they're pretty bad. And when you look at their running backs are just – this has got to be the worst running back core. Like, a completely shot yeah. Zeke. And Rico Dowdle, who I've just – I've watched last year and I watched this year, and I'm just like, you know what? He's just not the guy. He's not a starting running back. Um, so, I don't know. I can't do anything with the with the, with the the quarterbacks. I would like to. I would really like to take an over on, on Dak to fade the Ravens' defense, but I just can't get there. I don't trust either of these, these teams. Uh, you like any of the quarterback props, Jim? No, I, I, I really don't. Um, I don't think yeah. the passing totals, I don't think the passing touchdowns are in play. I think both teams are in flux right now and uh, trying to find their identity. Like you said, it's not the same Ravens team that we've had over the past decade. This is not the same Cowboys team that we've had over the past four or five years. And not having any of those running weapons behind Dak, he's really showing that he's not worth that contract. Um just can't get anywhere with the passing totals or passing touchdowns. I'd be interested in rushing props in this game more so than passing. Uh, Kirk Cousins and Patrick Mahomes. Um, this is the th- to me this is the trap line of of the week. Um, Pacheco's out. I'm guessing most people would say, "Oh, you got to take Mahomes over easy." And I'm I'm just wondering if this is the one that burns everybody. Um, it's he's kind of he's start, you know what he's starting to he's starting to pop up in the fantasy football world it's kind of a disappointment from a fantasy mm-hmm. perspective he doesn't put up these gaudy numbers anymore I mean right now this year 442 yards three touchdowns three interceptions that's just not great um I don't know what to make of Kirk Cousins he definitely looked a lot better um I mean he looked a lot better last week he did previously, but the fact is if Saquon Barkley catches that little pass, Kirk Cousins loses again and we don't get that last drive where he looked good. Um, for me, I can't I can't do anything with Mahomes, but I would just caution people. Taking it over on Patrick Mahomes has just not worked out long term um, over the last year and, and and so I mean, in a win against Cincinnati, eighteen and twenty five for hundred and fifty one yards. Um, I know they got the win against Baltimore on opening night, 291, but um, I don't know, Corbin, can you do anything with these quarterbacks? I think you just nailed it perfectly. I, I, I can't I can't bring myself to touch either of them. I'm looking at other props in that game. I just I just can't get there with the passing for either of them. Yeah, all right. Uh, we got a couple games on Monday night. We'll save those games uh, for Monday. Let's move to the rushing props. We'll take a look at some of these rushing yards. Uh uh, Corbin, we'll come to this game in our best bet uh, segment. Um, yeah. I, I, 47 and a half for Rashad White? No thanks. Give me the under on that one all day mm-hmm. long, Jim, right? Where's, where, where'd this number come from? I, it's very high, right? <laughs> it's, very it, high. I, he's, I he's banged up, awesome and he hasn't been running. good. Yeah. It's <laughs> odd. Odd. Very, very odd. I don't see them just pounding the rock against the Denver defense. Um, and it's just not what they do, is it? It's just Tampa likes to throw the ball. They have the weapons on the outside, uh, especially when you're going to get in your running back that's banged up that might not play the whole game, and we'll see some subs from someone else. So, yeah, give me the under on that one. Other than that, I don't know, maybe the Bo Nix over 20 and a half. I think he's going to have to run for his life a little bit, especially being on the road in Tampa. This is going to be a new experience for him. I think he could get there. He probably gets three scrambles. He could probably get to 20 and a half. Uh, Bears and the Colts. Um, listen, I talked, <laughs> I talked about DeAndre Swift on bet on it. Um, the line came out at fifty and a half. 
I recorded the show on Wednesday at 52 and a half. And now it's 57 and a half. I still think it's playable. The Colts have given up 474 yards rushing through two games. And now they just put their big guy, DeForest Buckner, on IR. I, like, they may want to stop the run. I'm just not sure that they have the scheme or the, the players to do it. Um, there was an absolutely fantastic video on this local. This, this, it's literally a guy in his bedroom. And he breaks down the Colts defense, and it's like the best film you've seen. Like it's 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 unbelievable. But he does a great job of breaking down how Gus Bradley runs the same exact defensive scheme no matter what. And I just don't think it's. I think it's a monster DeAndre Swift game. And Jim, I'll let you touch on the how bad the offensive line is um, for Chicago. But part of it is Caleb kind of. It's him. A lot of it's him. Okay. All right. Talk yeah. talk about it. A lot of it's him. I mean, look. <laughs> We, rookie quarterbacks make their offensive lines crazy. Absolutely crazy. Because all of a sudden, they have to block for an extra two or three seconds. All this running around. We saw, watched it last night with the college games. Some of these quarterbacks. I mean, they run around for 10, 12 seconds back there before anybody even puts pressure on them. And that just doesn't work in the NFL. It doesn't. Um, he makes their line worse. You need to start getting the ball out with timing. If you do not get the ball out with timing, the line can only block for three seconds. That's just the NFL. It's the nature of the beast. The guys are too good. These defenders are too athletic. They are as fast as these quarterbacks. Like if you if you put Caleb Caleb Williams, and uh, I don't know, give me another speedster rusher off the edge. Uh, you know, uh, Bryce Huff. In a sprint, you're going to be amazed how close it really is, 15, 20 mm. yards. So okay. 15, 20 yards, you're not going to be that much quicker. You're just going to get everybody in trouble. And I think once he learns how to get the ball out, look for your tight end, for God's sake, dump it <laughs> off, get some safe throws, then you can maybe save your offensive line a little bit of a headache here. Love it. Love it. Uh, Corbin Giants and the Browns, uh, any rushing? I like the under on Jerome Ford. Um, I was just going to think of I kind of lean to the over on uh, Foreman. He got 42 last week versus the Jags. I think I think they're actually going to attack them on the ground quite a lot versus the Giants. The Giants, Giants, uh, uh, I can't speak. Rush defense has been so poor for last year and this year. I just, do you want Deshaun Watson throwing the ball, or would you rather try and pound pound it with the run? I, I think they're going to run the ball, and 42 seems quite a reasonable total to go over for me. So that's the one I'm looking at. Yeah, I, I agree that if they're going to run the ball a lot, Foreman's going to sneakily get a bunch of work and a bunch of carries. I would look at the under on Singletary. That seems like a really ambitious number to try and get to against uh, against Cleveland. Um, so, How do you uh, feel about this half a yard with Wondell Robinson? That, that Giants <laughs> offense is looking for playmakers <laughs> and plays, and he does get some looks with these reversions. <laughs> We always talk about how we want to be where nobody else is sometimes. Is this one, true. Plus 190 for half a yard? <laughs> one reverse? One rush? Here, let me let me pull up one though, Robinson. One screen pass? Backwards <laughs> pass makes it half a yard? <laughs> well, you know, that's a good point. If, if Daniel Jones turns and throws yeah. and goes backwards, that's a rush. Um, mm -hmm. So he had one rush for 14 yards against Minnesota, none against Washington, but... You may be on to something. Yeah, you, you absolutely may. He had one. There's there's no talent on offense. They have to come up with some <laughs> one, kind of two, plays. Three, four, five. He did it six times last year. Mm -hmm. So uh, he's already done it once. So that's great. There's no talent on that. <laughs> it's pretty good. Wando Robinson over half at plus one ninety. Those those are that's pretty good odds. Uh, that might be worth a sprinkle on that one. Uh, Jim, stay with you. Eagles and Saints. Uh, I mean, Saquon is just, look, it's, it's, I don't want to say they're wasting Saquon or anything, but he looks good and it just feels like this offense should be way better. Like they should mm. be scoring way more points. Yeah. I know AJ Brown's out. Um, what do you take on the rushing props in this one? I, I don't know what we're going to get, man. I, I like Philly's rush defense, but their passing defense is just such a liability. So I would assume the focus is going to be on slowing down Kamara, uh, Kamara after last week. Uh, but I don't. I just don't know, man. I think Philly's good up front. Their pass rush has been non-existent. So I just can. I think New Orleans is going to try to expose them a little bit through the air. Uh, as far as Philly's offense, 
41 and a half is a little ambitious for Jalen Hurts. I'd be more interested in the anytime touchdown for him. Yes. Uh, they've proven that they're going to go back to it again. If they're within the three yard line, they are going to run the old push push. It's that simple. Um, Cap best was Kelsey on the broadcast. So, like, Travis, since he's in the five, what does that mean? He goes, Jalen Hurts rushing touchdown. <laughs> like, they already know it. They already know it. So that's where I would be looking. Other than that, I don't have a play on anybody. All right. No. We'll take a we'll take a look at some touchdown props. I've got a rushing prop in this one for my best bet. Uh, Chargers and Steelers here. Um, uh, oh, the, the they don't have any of the Chargers props because they're waiting on mm -hmm. Herbert. So, uh, I don't know, Corbin, any of the Steelers interest you? Justin Fields still kind of interests me. I, I feel like he's gonna he's gonna have to run to make some plays. I'm not particularly convinced with Warren or Harris, quite honestly. So I could easily see him making some plays. He, he has so much speed that he can easily just take off and get twenty or thirty yards in just one run. So that's the one I'm looking at in that game. Um yeah, so Jalen Warren at twenty six. I was gonna look up the Steelers uh stats here. So rushing you got Najee that that's a that's a pretty big number on Jalen Warren. I mean, he's got eleven carries for forty nine yards this entire season. Um, Najee's got thirty seven carries. Fields has twenty two. So, um, yeah, I guess Warren's I guess the Warren the, the, the Warren number comes from the first week where he only had like two carries, right? And then yeah. last week he suddenly had nine for forty two. So I guess that's where it's kind of one of those. Yeah. Do, do we do we stick with him now rushing the ball again like he was last year, or are, some, are we suddenly going to twist back to him only having two carries? Like that's, an, that's mm -hmm. a great point. I'm looking yeah. at it right now, like four point two or four point seven yards per carry against Denver. So yeah, maybe they sprinkle him in a little bit. And th this is a th if if Justin Herbert doesn't play, this Chargers team could look very very different and they could struggle. So but yeah. probably got to wait for Herbert. Uh, Texans and the Vikings. Hmm. Jim, I got nothing. <laughs> there's, there's Cam Akers that is is going to be the, the starter, I guess. Uh, mm -hmm. 62 and a half is his total. It's a huge total on him, surely. Like, that to come out of nowhere and suddenly go for that kind of total, like... Whenever we the just, books... We mentioned that we think Stroud's going to have a good passing day. I don't, I, don't, I don't really see where they've got this total from. Well, this, to me, screams that the books just clearly do not think that Mixon's going to be able to to try and go yeah. he's listed as yeah. doubtful yeah. that probably yeah, means it's out when yeah, the books not... when the books hang this number that means they're going okay we know that cam Akers is the only running back um that they're gonna have so yeah. um so we'll i wouldn't i wouldn't trust i don't trust cam Akers. i'm sorry i just don't trust cam Akers to rush over 62 and a half i can't i probably can't play any of these rushing props um uh, i'm interested in sam darnold <laughs> I never thought I'd say this, but I'm, well, okay. I'm interested in Sam Darnold's rushing yards. Um, look, uh, this is a revenge game for Daniel Hunter. We'll get to that later. But I would not be shocked to see Sam take off, and he's shown a willingness to. Against San Francisco, who were able to put pressure on Sam step up, 5 for 32. That's way over this number. Absolutely way over this number. Then we move on to the Giants game. Just pull it up real quick. Sam Darnold, three for three, didn't have to do much. It's the Giants. I think yeah. this game is going to be competitive. I think they're going to get after him. And this is going to take maybe two rushes, two first downs. He could get over this 12 and a half. That's a great look. I hadn't even thought of it. I love the look. It's a, it's a good one. Uh, Packers and the Titans. Now, see, this is interesting because they have a number out for J Spears, so the books clearly are thinking that Spears – um, mm -hmm. you know, is is gonna play, but Corbin sixty four and a half on Tony Pollard against your Packers. You you interested? I mention it every week. We just we, we can't defend the run against anyone. I can't remember. I was just gonna look up what Pollard's totals have been. Do I trust Pollard to be consistent enough to go over this total? I I'm not sure. But again, we can't defend the run against anyone. So it's kind of one of those probably one For of those stay aways again. So. For what it's worth, he's played the Jets and uh, the Bears, uh, 16 for 82 and 17 for 62. He's averaging 4.4 yards per carry. Um, so That's going to go up this week. 
<laughs> um, but Josh Jacobs, that number is too high. I can't. Yes. I can't. Yeah. I can't mess with. Especially him. without knowing whether Love is. If Love's playing, I don't see him needing to run the ball that much. Well, yeah. they're still going to rush with him, but he's not. That to me makes me think that Love isn't going to play with that total being that high. Uh, uh, Panthers and Raiders. Uh, uh, what have we seen from Zamir White to give him this 62 and a half total? I, 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 it must just be in the matchup. It just, it, they must just see Panthers and can't stop the run and then putting it there. But my Lord, the Raiders can't run the ball to save their life. Uh, mm-hmm. so Z- Zamir White under, I guess probably looks good. Jim, you like anything else? But the, uh, these numbers are all such a trap. It, this is the Andy Dalton experience right now. Like they, <laughs> yeah. they assume the Raiders are going to come into town, or, or the, the Panthers are going to come into Las Vegas and just get run right out the building. And I'm telling you, Andy Dalton is going to look better than people think. And yeah. they might have to abandon the run at some point and throw the ball with Devontae Adams and uh, Brock Bowers and all those guys. So I don't understand where we get to 62 and a half on Zamir White. I'd rather, I, I'm all over the younger on this as opposed to the over. I think Andy Dalton throws this entire game in flux, and all the props lose. <laughs> yes, three. He's he's averaging three point one yards per carry. I mean, th- th- he's that means they're going to give him twenty carries. I doubt it. Um, so, uh, Dolphins and Seahawks. Uh, any interest in a chain or Charbonnet, Corbin? You you have to just lean a chain, don't you? So he had twenty two rushes for uh, for ninety six yards last week. I just the Seahawks through the last uh, two weeks, I know they haven't played the greatest of teams, but they have the second best uh, pass defense through two. We mentioned that Skylar Thompson will probably have some issues. I know he's got Tyreek Hill and Waddle, but I think I think A-Chain's going to have to run. The Seahawks were 22, uh, 22nd against the Rush, and the patch showed last week that you can run on them. Are they going to trust Thompson at quarterback? Uh, they might trust him for bits and pieces to try and get it to Tyreek, but I, I think A-Chain could easily go over this total. I could see him get near the 100 mark again. So, 49ers and uh, the Rams. Uh, I've said my piece about the, uh, 94 and a half. 94. Imagine if like two weeks before the season started, I would have told you that Jordan Mason's going to have a <laughs> rushing total of 94 and a half. Uh, you would have lost your minds. Um, I can't do anything with any of these, Jim. What do you think? I think Matt's going to be running for his absolute life. <laughs> and it wouldn't shock me to have him take off. Uh, you know, we're still waiting to hear about Bosa. I know he's on the injury report. It's up. It's down. Um, I'm with you. I, I, I love where you're right? going with this. Like, I, I'm looking get at a sacked. lot of these. <laughs> yeah, he could get sacked four times. It's not going to count against his rushing. It doesn't matter. But if he's running for his life, all he's got to do is fall forward. <laughs> once. One I'm time. I don't understand you. why they put these lines out. And, you know, going back to the previous game real quick, Skylar Thompson at six and a half. The guy's a, a running quarterback against a great pass rush. You know, uh, Seattle's top five pressure rate in the league right now. So I'm looking more at these quarterbacks to run than I am. You know, rushing is up, passing is down right now. And I think with all these injuries in the NFL, you see a lot of these quarterbacks that are just kind of panicking and taking off. And they're all athletic enough to run for a yard or two. We just saw Aaron Rodgers run for how many off an Achilles? You telling me that Skyler Thompson can't get six? (laughs) I was going to say, we watched Aaron (laughs) Rodgers do it. I I love the Stafford over half. You're right. Like, I mean, there's going to be... QB sneak. How many plays is, is there going to be where Stafford goes back and the pocket collapses and nobody's open? Yep. Like, <laughs> like, like most plays? You just described like half their plays, Andy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a great one. I, I really I really do. Uh, I'm, in, I'm in favor of that one. Uh, Lions and the Cardinals. I just, I just, James Conner to score a touchdown every week. The guy just scores a touchdown every single week. Uh, like, and he's ne- and we we never bring him up about like <laughs> scoring touch in our props. Corbin, credit to you. You've done you've been doing that. From I have. The beginning. You have. So, uh, what's your take on the running backs in this game? Uh, 
Connor doesn't interest me as much this week. I'm looking at uh, Kyler Murray at over 34 and a half. He's just, he scrambles so well. The thing that puts me off is the Lions have a pretty good rush defense. So I'm kind of gone off that one. But the Gibbs, uh, the Gibbs over, is it 51 and a half? 51 I and a half. I can't quite read it. Um, he got 84 versus the Bucks last week, 40 versus the Rams in week one. He just has so much speed that I, I, I think I think the Lions are going to need to run the ball here. I think they need more rushing attack. And the Cardinals' rush defense is, is really not convincing to me. So I, I would rather Gibbs total to Montgomery. I think I mentioned it last week where I mentioned Montgomery still gets the carries. But Gibbs is just so explosive that I think I like him at 51 and a half. So that's the one I'm looking at. Here, this is a great trivia uh, for your buddies. James Conner has scored a touchdown in six out of the last seven games <laughs> that he's played in. Wow. <laughs> like, th- th- those are Derrick Henry numbers, <laughs> you know? So, uh, Ravens at the Cowboys. We, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> look at these. Look at how awful these numbers are for the starter, for the <laughs> running backs for the Cowboys. 31 and a half. That's so low, and yet I don't want the over. Dowdle, 28 and a half. I don't, I don't want the, I don't want it either. Um, I don't know. I, nothing really jumps out uh, to me with these. 54 and a half is, is a lot. Feels like these numbers are, are pretty tough to find any value on it. Jim, you like any of them? No, not really. I, th- this game in general has been pretty much a pass for me all week. I, I don't have anything yeah. jumping off the board. We'll, we we need to talk about touchdown scores. Derek Henry. I mean, I'm going to sure. do a Jim here. CD Lamb, one and a half. <laughs> Just... Gets a reverse. We're, we're mentioning how yeah. bad they are. Yeah. Dowdle and Elliot are. Sure, sure, surely they surely. could just hand the ball off to Lamb just once. Like, they do it, Corbin. You're right. They do run they the do. reverse with CD Lamb. He they had do. three carries against Cleveland. Mm-hmm. This, is, this is not anything that's that's uh, that's out of the realm of possibility. I'm, I'm with you. I'm with this you. Is true. Uh, Chiefs and the Falcons. Um, I, give me the under on Samaj P. Ryan. It got, he, they don't give him carries. He comes out and he runs. Yeah, he runs routes. I, I don't see him getting carries. Um, he he's the uh, the McKinnon of this season. Yeah, he did this with McKinnon last year. He doesn't run the ball. Yeah, yeah, and and even when even when Pacheco went out last week, he <laughs> came in just to catch a couple passes, and he didn't even do that. So, um, Corbin, do you like any of the rushing props on this one? I think I'm passing on the. I, I don't like this game as a whole. I feel like it could be quite a trap. I'm yeah. not sure which way it's going to go. So, All right, guys, we're going to talk about some receiving uh, props. Just real quick, guys, our NFL pack is up. Uh, if you're watching this Saturday morning, the NFL pack comes with our college football best bet of the week 15 and 5. Uh, going back to last season. So uh, we only do one play a week in college football, and it's worked out absolutely great. 15 and 5 uh, last year and this year, 2 and 1 this year, and it comes with our NFL props. We've got a few props in there as well. So encourage everyone to get that. We are up 140 units on this year. Uh, Corbin, excellent cash in Formula One uh, on you. qualifying. Well done on that one. So uh, just keeps adding a lot of profits. To the bankroll. So appreciate that. And uh, don't forget to go get that NFL pack, uh, especially if you're watching this before college football starts. All right, let's take a look at some receiving props here. Before we get to the receiving, I completely yeah. forgot. We haven't, we haven't talked about Lamar Jackson running, did we? I, I, I think he's going to have a big running week this week. Okay. M- must, must win game, 45 last week on just five carries, 122 in week one. I think I think he's saving his runs and his energy and some of his durability for the for the bigger games. And I, to me, this feels like a must must it's win a big game. game. Oh yeah, yeah. That's a good point. Derek Henry is just not cutting it from what I see. So I could I could easily see him having to run I don't know ten plus times in this game just to try and create something. So. It's true. I mean, they they obviously went all out in week one, didn't work, and then mm-hmm. they re- reeled them in in week two, and guess what? Yeah. Didn't work. <laughs> so um, <laughs> it's all right. It's a good. <laughs> excuse me, Broncos and Buccaneers. Uh, Corbin, you like any receiving props in this one? I don't. I'm more on the rushing that we'll get to shortly in that game for the Bucks. So all right. Uh, same with me. I don't. The, I like Baker over um, uh, Bears and Colts. Um, <clears throat> Pittman's been an absolute disaster this year. Like, 
like, I don't know if he insulted Anthony Richardson's mother before the season started or something, <laughs> but, like, I mean, he's not getting the looks. R- Richardson is not looking good. And when he does throw it, it's going to Alec Pierce. I think Josh Downs is back this week. It, they've been talking about him locally that he's back, and sure enough, they got a prop number out for him. So, to me, all signs point to Downs. And Downs and Richardson's are BFFs off the field. Uh, Pittman under is a way to go. and He's on the injury report, isn't he, as well? Yes, he, he popped feel, up on like, Friday. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is always suspicious when they just pop up out of nowhere. So I think this is a sneaky one. Um, and uh, Broma Dunze, 38 and a half. He's hurt. He's on, he's, he's on the injury report, too. I don't know, Jim. Any of these, any of these uh, receiving props you like? No, no, no. Okay. I mean, the Bears should be throwing to Cole Komet, but they're not going to. Um, <laughs> that's what they should be doing. That's what they should. So yeah. it'd be interesting if they figure that out this weekend. We'll find out. But I'm a wait and see approach on both these offenses. Giants and the Browns. My biggest regret from last week was not putting in uh, Malik Neighbors. Um, that being said, he's, he's got a big number, six, seven, half, and newsflash is not playing the, the Washington Commanders. Mm-hmm. So um, feels like there's some opportunity on some unders here, Corbin. Yeah, it's kind of one of those, I, I like the, I mentioned it before, I like the Browns to run. So I was like trying to see if I could pick someone that I think is going to go under. I couldn't quite pick out one name. I quite liked uh, Wondell Robinson last week and he just didn't, he didn't quite cut it against the commanders because as you said, they went to neighbors so much. I think that the total is definitely inflated on neighbors this week, 67 and a half versus this Browns team. But then like everything I said, and then I go back to I might as well just take Daniel Jones under his passing total. If mm-hmm. I if True. I think Neighbors is going to struggle this week again, I think Robinson's having a few issues. I suddenly look at the rest of the list, and I'm like, where are you getting a hundred? What is it? A hundred and I have one hundred eighty-one yards. Or so. You're right. If Neighbors yeah. goes under yeah. Jones, one hundred eighty-one. Yeah. So hard to see I look path. at that list. And I'm like, where's he getting one hundred eighty-one from that list? So okay. Uh, Eagles and Saints. Uh, what did you think of the passing game, the receiving game from Philly last week, outside of the Saquon <laughs> drop? <laughs> anything, just, anything you can do with him? It's not in sync, man. It's just not in sync. The, yeah. W- without A.J. Brown in there, it's it does not look like the same offense. Hurts does not have the same confidence. Um, I, just, I can't get there with anybody. 71's a lot for Smith. That's yeah. a lot. It's a when he's the only weapon, I mean, if anything, I'd be looking at it under there uh, against the Saints defense. I mean, you have to think that he's going to draw Latimer, right? So, I mean, why would you why would you go after him? Maybe you're looking at Dallas Goddard, but I'd be looking at unders of the Eagles passing offense. Corbin, we're going back to Rashid Shahid. I was just waiting for you to mention it every week. It. Just, just play it. Just play it. We mentioned the Eagles' pass defense has sucked. It's cashed both weeks quite well, well not easily. quite very very easily. It's just one of those you just you just stick with it. You just play it every week mm-hmm. and you'll end up up by the end of the year. It's the same as sadly sadly I've lost Waddle now for the yeah. rest of the year. That was that's a shame, but Shahid is there to take over. So I also quite like Kamara over his total. I got burned on his receptions last week. I, I always struggle with Kamara, whether it's receptions or yards. But I like the yards here at thirty-two and a half. So he only had two receptions last week, but he had the he had the huge uh, catch and run to go over the total. He had twenty-seven on five receptions the week before. Eagles pass defense sucks. It's been awful, not just this year, last year as well. And it only really needs one explosive play to get near this total. And then he gets at least normally three, three, four, five, six plus receptions. So yeah, I quite like that total. Chargers and the Steelers. Uh, Jim, pass. Pass. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. All right. Uh, Texans, Texas and Vikings. Corbin. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do something dangerous, Andy. I'm. Uh, you're gonna. You're gonna pick. You're gonna try and pick one Texan gonna, wide am, receiver and hope to get am, the one. <laughs> I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna dare to do it again. This is a lead. I'm not. I'm not. Not an official player of any kind. Nico Collins, 73 and a half. The Vikings can't defend the pass. They're already already ranked 25th for this year, 24th last year. He, 
uh, Collins has 135 and 117 to start the year. If I have to pick one, I'm picking him this week. So, but again, you might as well just wrap it up and just go for Stroud, quite honestly. So yeah. Uh, Packers and uh, Titans. Yep, it's a repeat. DeAndre Hopkins under 30 and a half. He's not even playing that many snaps. Like he's he's not out there like a ton. Uh, that's all I need in this game. DeAndre how Hopkins many, under. How, how many targets? Because I have the stats. How many targets do you think he has? Just take a guess. Five. Five. Three. He has three. Three, tar- targets. three targets through two games. I thought he had more than that. This injury is yeah. not getting better. I think this is just the I, this is the, put this in the Rashid Shahid category of you. Just yeah, this play is one of my favorite week. plays this week. Yeah, I'm gonna, I, it, we'll break that one down have. right now. So <laughs> <laughs> three <laughs> targets. Oh my gosh. Uh, Panthers versus the Raiders. I, I I this kind of falls in the category of I don't know who's for the Panthers is going to catch passes. I just think they mm-hmm. are, and I think Dalton goes over. Um, Brock Bowers looks amazing. Um, what's funny is I, I took a future on an under uh, on him, but it was the touchdowns and he, I don't, he doesn't have a touchdown yet, but he's going to obliterate his future for yards and, uh, mm-hmm. and catches if he stays healthy. But, um, I can't, I can't really figure out who I want to play over. I just, I just know I think Dalton's going to throw the ball quite a bit. Corbin, you know, these guys, I, I, I have a, I, I was going to say be a receiving threat out of the backfield because that's the check down. Well, I'm going to say, I'm, I, I was about to say I want to take both of them and Dalton, all three of them, to oh. <laughs> to rush here. Like, Sa- Sanders is one and a half, Chuba's two and a half. Like, it's just, there's such there's such low totals that they could easily just get a couple of reception. Check Dal- Dalton is yeah. the check down king. Yeah. So. so you're looking at the reception. Yeah, I'm looking at the reception, here. sorry, not the yards. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah Shuba two and a half. Yeah, you're, okay. Miles Miles Sanders. And I think, yeah. yeah, only one of them. Like if you if you hit Sanders, then it's just a free play basically on Shuba. They're both mm-hmm. basically one's just plus money, and I think one's just under. Like we we keep saying, and Jim and me have said it the whole show that we think he's going to check it down, and these totals are so low for him to do exactly that. So, uh, Dolphins and Seahawks, a chain, Corbin. No, I think he's. I uh, I'm more like him in the rushing than the than this. So. That's that's the popular play this week. Oh, you think the, uh, the, the a chain receiving? I think that's oh, okay. the popular. I've been waiting to bring this up. <laughs> we were okay. going to get to it. I've heard a lot of love for a chains receiving. But okay. worries me when everybody's on one play. Yeah, the Seahawks are the Seahawks are impossible to figure out now. It's Lockett one week. It's Metcalf one week. It's you know it's Smith and Jigba. I can't pick any of them. Um, but uh, Corbin, we think of this low total on Tyreek sixty one and a half. Stay away. It's. I'd love to know what his receptions are because I could. I could quite easily see them just throwing in the ball and quick little passes just to keep him involved. You're going to have to get in the ball somehow. I can't remember. I was Five trying to find half. this. Oh, it, uh, it's a lot I would have, it's at a lot four and a half, I could get there. At five and a half, I, I can't quite. But again, it wouldn't surprise me if he has five or six carries but doesn't go over his receiving total just because of how short the passes are going to probably have to be to get him involved. So Yeah. 49ers and the Rams. Um, <laughs> not, they're not giving you a discount on use check anymore. Good Holy good. moly. Good. Yeah. Uh, 17. I'm, th- I'm thinking about going the other way. <laughs> that's, pretty, that's a big number for use check. I know it's amazing. Nobody. It's that's amazing. Big. Yeah. That's a, um, and I feel like we're going to be on the same. You already somewhat mentioned it. Juwan Jennings at mm-hmm. 44 and a half. Ayuk's going to attract the attention. I think the 49ers could have a field day against the Rams, quite honestly. You saw what the Cardinals did to them yeah. last week. And yeah. Jennings is going. Jennings, Jennings' speed is underrated. He he gets open quite often, but he always gets overlooked because of Debo, Kittle, and uh, Ayuk. I think as the second slash third option for Purdy. It could easily go to John Jennings this week. My only problem with that is they could just run the ball with Mason over and over and over and over, and over again. That they don't need to throw him the ball quite honestly. But that's the one that sticks out for me. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm with you on on on, on Jawan Jennings. So, 
Um, Lions and the Cardinals. Jim, you like any of these receiving props? I like Amon Ross St. Brown is apparently banged up. Uh, Jameson yep. Williams, he's looked good, but he's a little banged up. Um, like, I, I, I don't know what is going on with Sam Porter, Sam Porter, but Mike, he's got to break out. It's, it's, it's exactly what I was waiting to talk about. Okay. Go One touchdown and seven trips to the red zone last week. That's crazy. Where is Sam Laporta? Where is he? <laughs> That's his time. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> like, why are we not? Why are we not going to Sam Laporta? It's. I'm sure it's driving fantasy owners insane. Um, Yes, it is, got, Jim. He, <laughs> yes, it is. Didn't know you had Sam there, buddy. Yeah, I mean, um, on both my teams. So at, at what point do they just remember that this is the guy they got to go to in the red zone? <laughs> uh, I would think that we're going to see a rushing attack. Like, they have to be better than one for seven for touchdowns. That, that That's just not going to cut it. So you really question, as always, with Dan Campbell, is is what is their mentality going to be? We're going to get in the red zone and we're going to pound the rock. Or are we going to throw to our giant six foot four tight end? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, at some point, Laporta has to break out. The battery is just right. Uh, I think Trey McBride is going to get a lot of work. Um, other than that, that's it. I'm looking at the two tight ends receiving wise, and, and that's about it. Uh, but I'm not willing to jump on Sam Laporta now, and I would be interested in McBride more so than anything. Corbin? I'm going to echo the McBride. I, I would never take McBride for receiving. I would take him for receptions. I think it's at, I think, because I already looked at it, I think it's at five and a half, which is mm. really annoying because I would have taken it at four and a half. Um, I'll let you get to it. But he gets so many of these little passes. He doesn't always get the yards. Yeah, it's five and a half. I, I was looking at using uh, him to have three or four receptions as an alt line. I think that's a good parlay piece if you need one. But yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't play him at his normal totals. Um, Ravens and Cowboys. I want nothing to do with any mm-hmm. of these. Yeah, I want nothing to do with it. Like, likely come crashing back to earth. Uh, <laughs> like, they just Ferguson at thirty four and a half after coming off that knee injury. I might look at the under on that one. Nothing interests me uh, in this game. And uh, finally, Chiefs and Falcons. Corbin, do you have the the onions gonna, to take anything in this one? I'm gonna I'm gonna have the onions to take Kelsey under forty eight and a half. Oh, there you we go. We saw it. We saw it last year where we spent the first half of the year questioning what was wrong with Kelsey I think he's just saving himself I I, mm-hmm. I don't think they're not giving him the workload early because there's no need why why bang him up early when you can try and save him for the crunch time at the end of the year he's getting on in age he's had uh 34 yards this year I think I, I'm, I'm gonna take his under quite honestly he has so many options now to throw the ball Rice, you've mentioned. I was quite looking at his total slightly high for me this week. So, yeah, I'm going to take Kelsey under 48 and a half, I think. Jim, anything in this game receiving-wise? So, Justin Watson at 18 and a half. Rasheed Rice's number is out of control. 75 and a half. I, I think that's high for Rice. I do realize he's the number one, uh, but I'm not willing to go at 75 and a half. So, like you're saying with Kelsey... He's not getting the target, so where else is the ball going to go? That's the question. Well, it's not going to be Juju Smith-Schuster, okay? It just seems like Watkins is getting these, you know, 18. He's hovering right around this this number here, and he could get this on one catch. He runs those deep outs. He runs those deep ins. They can get close to 18 on one reception, so if he sees two targets, I wouldn't be shocked to see him go over this 18 and a half. Uh, with Pacheco out, they are going to have to throw. I don't think they're going to throw like everyone thinks they're going to. And Mahomes is going to have 350. But I can see out of those 220, 230 yards, 18 of that going to Watson. Uh, I have a funny Carson Steele uh, st- story. So Carson Steele went to school where I went to school, like like mm. down on the south side of Indianapolis. My, my buddy still lives down there. and His son plays football and actually worked out uh, at a camp with Carson Steele over the summer. So my buddy's son is 10 years old. We're doing our fantasy football draft. And my buddy's like, my son is demanding that I draft Carson Steele. <laughs> so to not mess around, he like got, grabbed Carson Steele like the seventh or eighth 
round, and now week three is sitting on the freaking starting running back of the Chiefs. <laughs> so uh, we we might be the only league that Carson Steele was was available was not available when waivers came on on Tuesday. So whatever, it was it was a it was a funny moment because now his son is so excited. All right, let's do uh let's just do some quick touchdown scores. Do you like any uh, Corbin? You like anything in Broncos Buccaneers? Uh, well, I I think Bucky Irvin's gonna have a great time okay. rushing. So I, I I quite like the price on him to score. So that I, I'll get to where I like number. him later. But yeah, it's a great number if he's if Rashad White's banged up and he's running like it. Uh, Chicago Bears and the Colts. Jim, any of these? No. Nope. Yeah, me either. Nope. Me either. Uh, <laughs> Giants and the Browns. <laughs> no, keep going. <laughs> I might I might sprinkle Dante Foreman. Plus 135, they get in close. Giants, bad rush D. I can see it. Somebody's uh, going to score in that game. <laughs> someone's going to score a touchdown. Uh, Eagles and the Saints, Jim. God, minus 205 on Kamara. Good Lord. Oh. I've got to go back to Jalen Hurts. You, hey, give me I plus money on Jalen Hurts. That's simple for the rest of the season. If you get a pass interference in the end zone, you can just <laughs> – it's, it's done. You know, here's yeah. the point, too, is go back to the, the touchdown on Monday. If this is seven years ago, that's a Saquon Barkley touchdown. But now every scoring play gets reviewed and the ball gets put on the one more than ever. True. So it's just there's so much value in it. Yeah. <laughs> Would you say how many times last year? Was it how many he, games? He did it was nine it? out of the first twelve that's games right. of the year yeah. where he you know, he he was hurt later on. But mm-hmm. um yeah, it was nice to see them get that play um rolling. Uh Chargers and Steelers, ugh, Corbin. Ugh. Echo. Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> no, just keep yeah. going. Uh, Texans and Vikings, Corbin. <sighs> Nico Collins, why not? Plus 145. Again, it's it's one of those I'd rather just take the Stroud passing mm-hmm. touchdowns right. than try and pick one of them. Uh, Packers and the Titans, Jim. Don't know what we're going to get from the Packers. I yeah. can't trust the Titans down in the red zone. I mean, I guess what's Tony Pollard? Plus one Plus ten. Plus one ten. Ah, That's pretty good. Right. I I would want more because you just don't know if they're gonna if Will Levis is gonna throw a lateral twelve yards behind him <laughs> down there. So I need a better number. Uh Panthers and the Raiders. Um kind of like Chuba Hubbard here. Maybe I, if it, it maybe we sprinkle like Deontay Johnson and Adam Thielen if Dalton throws a you know, if Dalton throws a couple touchdown passes. Surely one of these guys has to has to catch it. Uh, probably not much there. Uh, Corbin Dolphins Seahawks. A chain's the only one that I can look at here, but again, it's it's kind of mm, there's better places than trying to pick a touchdown in that game. Sneaky one would be Charbonnet two touchdowns. Mm. This, if if this Dolphins if this Dolphins offense falls apart and Seattle gets up, I could see them just. Do you think not... that price is big enough? No, though plus four hundred to have two touchdowns does. Like, no, it's not big enough. It, it should be plus 800, but I'm yeah. just looking for something yeah, exactly. sneaky. Um, uh, 49ers and Rams. Mason. I, listen, Jordan I, Mason at minus 165 might be a deal or a steal. Exactly. Um, and I, don't get two. I don't like the value on plus 360, but I think, I think he's getting two. I'm just thinking if they get down to the one, like we're saying, you know, carry's got to go somewhere. It can't all go to Mason. See, that number is short to me. Okay. Plus four fifty. So. Yeah. All right. I need more than that. Uh, Lions and Cardinals, Jim. Any of these guys? James Connor. Connor. Connor and <laughs> Andy's face when he sees Connor, yeah. just it lights yes. up. He's like a kid at kiss. A kid at <laughs> yes. Christmas. Yes. Uh, Ravens and Cowboys. Uh, Jim. Derrick Henry minus one thirty five is not too bad. I think that's. A, I expected way worse than that. Uh, I will okay. play Derrick Henry every week. All right. <laughs> just that simple. Uh, and Chiefs and Falcons, Corbin. No. <laughs> All righty, I like it. <laughs> I like. I what, like what's that? What's the not to score uh, a touchdown? Do we have time to see those this week? Or yeah, we can look at them real quick. It went horrible last week. It did. We picked, we picked two guys and. and <laughs> I, I actually like Kelsey to score in the Chiefs game at plus one thirty-five. I, I, okay. We saw this with the Jets. Uh, the squeaky wheel kind of gets the grease. And yeah. You can see them forcing it to Wilson. I can see them forcing it to Kelsey. 
to get a score. Um, if you're a believer, I don't know how the Bucks have kept this together, but they 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 still haven't allowed a passing touchdown. So well, you, I don't know, Cortland Sutton minus 350. Corbin, did you have a couple guys? No, I was just going to flip through them. Sutton and I was interested. I think we were quite interested in his receptions last week, and he, he got nowhere near it. So him to suddenly have a touchdown is quite a high price. I, um, I can't remember. I had another name, but I can't remember. Rashad White remember at this. minus 115 is interesting. He's mm-hmm. not the bull rush. You know, no. we'd have pounded up the gut. But, um, all right, Bears and the Colts, player to not score. DJ Moore, yeah, uh, I, think the same thing. I could quite easily parlay that with something. Uh, we don't yeah. need to talk about Caleb's woes, but <laughs> uh, Giants and Browns. No, keep keep going on that one. Uh, Eagles and Saints. John Dotson, he's not. He's doing nothing. Just a whole lot of absolute nothing. Mm. Goddard, same thing. Whole lot of nothing. Um, exactly. You could quite easily throw a cut, like one or two of these in a parlay piece if you need them so mm-hmm. uh chargers and steelers um i i, I never like harris i i know ne- i'm never convinced by him but i can't take <laughs> minus 200 on mm-hmm. on that uh, so. texans and vikings i no. kind of like, like aaron jones did not have one uh, texans yeah. are pretty pretty good defense and he's not He's not the super explosive. Oh, I was uh, I was hoping runner. there would be a number on Hopkins. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, 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 that would have that would have that would have been too good to uh, yeah, too good to wish. For. Uh, Panthers and Raiders. Amir White, who just hasn't looked that great, um, but it is the Panthers. So yeah, uh, Dolphins and Seahawks. Boy, you could go really contrarian and take a chain, but man, minus one fifty five to not have a touchdown. Yeah, Seahawks that does... defense is good though, man. Yeah. The Seahawks defense is getting underrated in this game. I think <laughs> I yeah. think the Skylar Thompson's gonna be able to lead this remotely competent offense. Yeah. Uh 49ers and Rams, I would absolutely look at Kyron Williams. That, that, that's that's yeah. who you gotta stop on the on the Rams. So I would exactly. I would let them do that. Uh Lions Cardinals. Man, Laporta minus two sixty. So sad. The books are mm-hmm. just telling you he's not doing anything. Wah, wah. What's the what's the price on St. Brown? Because I I've mentioned before. Uh, yeah, minus one seventy five. Ah, uh, it's it's mm, it's kind of on that range. He's he's not as good away from home. At home, his stats are completely different. Mm. So yeah, when he's away, so and obviously he's banged up with a slight injury as well. I could quite I could quite see that. So Ravens and Cowboys, Zeke. Oh, they do love him by the goal line. So you probably mm-hmm. probably can't play that. And then. Uh, Chiefs and Falcons. Uh, I... Go back to old Kyle Pitts here. <laughs> he's, he's it's going to play pretty soon. We're going to be saying old Kyle Pitts before he actually <laughs> before he gets <laughs> does anything. Uh, that's funny. All right, let's uh, go to uh, Corbin. Let's go to the alt universe. So uh, I like what you did here. So you took a same game parlay. Um, in the uh, Titans game, and then you put it with uh, Jordan Mason here. So walk us through this. Yeah, so basically my point here is these are two people that I like at their normal totals, and this has just given me a buffer. So I've mentioned that I think Hopkins had three targets through the first two weeks. I think he had two receptions on those for 17 yards combined. I don't suddenly see him getting to 45, mix in with the fact that we have no rush defense, so they're probably just going to run all over us, just like every team eventually works out that they can do to us. We have an all right uh, pass defense, especially if Jair Alexander goes near him or Ridley. That locks him up. And then the, the alt to- team total at 28 and a half. So they've had 17 in each of the two games so far. I expect both teams to just be running the clock down. Nothing particularly explosive or exciting, probably a low scoring. Uh, you've got Mason at 55 and a half, but you can actually get him just to have 60 plus. Brings the price down slightly from, I think, 161 to the, about the mid 140s, if I remember. So he has 100 and 147 through the two games, playing the Rams, third worst rush defense. No Debo to take any kind of carries or work away from him. I, the total, I think his normal total is in the like 98 94 kind of range. and a half. <laughs> it's, so, it's so, so again, that's that's like a 35 yard buffer for that. Wrap those both together, and that gets you a pretty good play, I think. So that's one I will try and play myself. So, 
Love it. Good work on uh, the alt universe. All right, Jim, let's talk about inside the trenches. Each week we talk about a couple of units here, offense or defensive line, that we think we can exploit. Uh, talk about the Rams first. Uh, what has not been said, uh, besides just the trenches, the whole team is banged up. Um, I think the injuries on this team are going to magnify each other, each other, which I think is the real problem. So we had spoke early in the week, you know, with Aaron Donald leaving the Rams defensively, we were kind of shocked by them a little bit. They played very well the first week. I wonder if teams are starting to figure this out now, and I think the injuries on both sides of the ball are becoming very evident. I'm not seeing the run-stopping ability from the Rams on the defensive line. I'm not seeing them to be able to generate consistent pressure. It's just not there. Offensively, they're still missing the entire left side of their line. Coupled with that, the Cooper Cup injury this week is going to make that line really have a hard time protecting Stafford. Uh, he's not going to be able to get the ball out quick to his safety nets, and I think we could see some higher sack numbers here from the Rams uh, giving up a little bit more here. So like we said, Stafford's going to run. I'm going to be looking at him trying to, you know, maybe get that half a yard <laughs> that we're jonesing for if he can fall forward. And I just don't see things getting better with the Rams. If they get one more injury on this offensive line, we're looking at an absolute skeleton crew of a unit. And uh, like you said, I would not be surprised if they pull Stafford and throw the backup in just to protect them. Moving on to the Giants. This was an O-line that we thought was going to be bad to start the season. This was a defensive line that we thought was going to be good. Surprisingly, the O-line hasn't been as bad as I thought it was. They still don't have any names, but you look at the stat column, they did pretty good protecting Jones last week. They didn't give up a ton of sacks. Week one, they got obliterated, but it seems like they settled in. Evan Neal is not even your starter anymore. It looks like they found a replacement for him. Um, they're protecting a little bit more. Now, defensively, I think this defensive line is massively underachieving. We have Brian Burns, who is now on the injury report. He popped up. That's their premier pass rusher. That's not going to work. Thibodeau is still fighting with the media with zero sacks, just going on and on and on. So Dexter Lawrence really has been the only bright spot in the trenches here for the Giants the first two weeks of the season. So either they turn something around scheme-wise, or we could be looking at a big waste of money on top of all of this that secondary is not good i don't see the giants being able to get home a lot against the browns so even though that browns line is banged up i see them actually manhandling this giants line here and a lot of rushing yards the rushing totals coming up for the browns all right good stuff um let's take a look at some sack props here to take advantage of some of these lines so walk us through uh three of these that you like so daniel hunter uh we got a revenge spot here uh, he's going back to minnesota I have a sack. He got really off the board uh, with one and a half last week with Will Anderson. They look like they finally figured out how they're going to play together and get pressure. So minus 110, great number. Montez Sweat at some point has to show up. Has to show up for this Bears defense. He's done nothing all season. Plus 135, at some point he's got to get home. Against the Colts, I think this is a better time than ever for him to get some pressure and get Richardson down to the ground. Last but not least, we're going to go with Chris, Chris Jones. We got beat by the hook. I got beat by the hook, basically. I was shocked to see that this was half a sack. So if you're going to give me Chris Jones at plus money at half a sack, I will play that every week of the season. All right. Love it. Um, survivor picks, <laughs> this will be pretty easy. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm the lone left survivor. I'm going with the Buccaneers over the Broncos. I think uh, Bo Nix is just... Uh, it's a rough start to the season, and I, I like this Buccaneers team. I like Baker, um, so uh, Buccaneers will be the play. All right, you got saying, Andy, we gotta have one of us free still going. <laughs> it's, it's wild. I, I, listen, listen, this this happened a few years ago. I was in one, and uh, there was twenty people, and it was over by week four. It was, it was just like, should we run it back? And we were all like, no, <laughs> no, we don't want to run it back. We didn't have, we did not have any fun, so. All right, let's do our official best bets for week three. I am going with Jalen Hurts over 13, or that's not right. It's nine and a half, isn't it's it? It's nine and a half. I, he, he's had 13, what am I doing? He's had 13 rush attempts the last couple weeks. There we go. Sorry about that. 
I'll alert the graphics department. Okay, let's start over. <laughs> Jalen Hurts, over nine and a half rush attempts. Uh, he's had 13 each of the last uh, two weeks. I did not put this play in last week, and I cannot believe I did. With no A.J. Brown, they just need to figure out ways uh, to create yards. And Jalen Hurts is healthy. All the tush pushes count as one. Uh, the kneel downs, uh, you know, count. Uh, so, it, like, if you get one on the goal line and a couple third and ones or fourth and ones, it just, it's amazing how quickly you can eat up these rush attempts. Uh, I didn't think the receivers did a good job of getting open last week, and Hertz has no problem, you know, tucking the ball and running. So, nine and a half, I was, I was surprised. It was nine and a half. I, th- I thought they would bump it up to ten and a half. So, two weeks in a row with 13 uh, rush attempts, I think it gets over again. Uh, Jim, what's yours? Uh, we're going Joe Burrow over one and a half pass touchdowns. Again, fade Washington secondary. I don't know how else to say it. Uh, T. Higgins is coming back. Whether he's 100% or not, that is going to give a little more space with uh, Chase on the other side. So I think Burrow's got plenty of targets here. That Washington secondary is just switch keys. So uh, Bengals need to win. This is about the time that they start bad, and then all of a sudden they start firing up. So give me uh, Joe B over one and a half. Corbin, who you like? I'm going to go with uh, Bucky Irving over 28 and a half uh, rushing. I've mentioned, I think the Buccaneers are going to have a good rushing day here. The Broncos rush defense is really not that great. It was the third worst last year. Uh, He had 22 last week versus the Lions. And we always say how good the Lions are at uh, rush defense. He had 62 the week before versus the Commanders. I think this is a really low total. And the best bit for me is that White is nursing that injury. It's like, if they, if they get up, surely they're going to want to save White for a bit and run with Irving. Even if he tries to play, he could easily re-injure that same injury, and then it's just Irving. I, I think at such a low total, this is a pretty pretty good play. So it's probably my favorite of the week. All right. Jalen Hurts over nine and a half rush attempts. Joe Burrow over one and a half touchdowns. And Bucky Irving over 28 and a half rushing. Those are your best bets. All right, guys, that's going to do it for us. Don't forget to grab the uh, NFL pack that is up. Gets all of our plays for the rest of the week. Hit the like button and leave a comment if you don't have a hot take with your best play. Just type the word wine in the comment section. W-I-N-E. It really helps the algorithm out and all that stuff. So thanks, everyone, for joining. Good luck on all your plays, and we will see everyone later. Good luck. Good luck, guys.